Food is something we cannot live without. Food is a part of our culture, our companion in all occasions. In fact, our ancestors' diet may have influenced evolutionary changes to help us become the humans we are today. Continue watching till the end as we unravel how the ever-changing human diet has influenced the human evolution. Hello everyone, welcome to Scientastica. My name is Reza and I work as a scientist at a pharmaceutical company here in the United States. In my free time, I like to make videos about intriguing scientific topics. So without further ado, let's jump into today's topic. To understand food and evolution, let's look at the first food we consume after we're born, milk. If we look deep inside, at the molecular levels of milk, we find a sugar named lactose. To help digest milk, our body needs an enzyme called lactase that breaks down lactose into simpler nutrients that we can easily absorb. Lactase enzyme is produced in large amounts in babies during breastfeeding. As babies grow up and start eating other solid foods, the lactase enzyme production declines, reducing their ability to digest milk. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're not a baby and you're able to digest milk just fine. That is because a mutation in your gene allows you to produce large amounts of lactase, unlike 65% of the human population. Around 10,000 years ago, in the Middle East, our ancestors began to domesticate livestock. Cattle milk then became a readily available source of nutrition in the otherwise dry climate. In Northwestern Europe, due to low sunlight, humans could not produce enough vitamin D naturally. So drinking cattle milk, which is full of calcium and vitamin D, became a great way of improving calcium absorption and preventing calcium deficiency disorders like rickets. These benefits may have led to permanent mutations in the genomes of these groups of humans, allowing them to be able to digest milk throughout their lives, while the rest of the world population remains largely lactose intolerant. In Central Africa, where malaria is widespread, people traditionally consume bitter tasting plants and they are less sensitive to bitter taste compared to the rest of us. Chemical compounds that are responsible for the bitter taste belong to a group called cyanogenic glycosides. These bitter compounds are toxic if consumed in large amounts, but can be protective against malaria if taken in moderation. Modern-day Central Africans may have evolved to tolerate bitter taste better because of the anti-malarial effect of some of these bitter plants. Different types of spices are often consumed with food all over the world. These spices often have antioxidant properties and they help neutralize the toxic free radicals produced in our bodies. People living in hotter climates tend to use more spices because bacteria grow best in warm temperatures and adding spices can kill bacteria that is growing on perishable foods like meat. Cooking our foods may also have influenced human evolution. Cooking is a process that increases caloric content of foods, eliminates the need to chew food all day, and thus reduces the energy cost of digestion. This means by simply cooking their food, our ancestors saved a lot of time and energy which could be used for hunting and gathering or even developing a larger brain. Although our ancestors' eating habits shaped their genomes for the better, in modern humans, the same genes can promote diseases like obesity and diabetes. During certain times of the year, our ancestors would have access to plenty of food, whereas for the rest of the year, the food supply would be scarce. Our ancestors may have adapted to this by carrying thrifty genes that allowed them to store fat and rapidly gain weight during times of food abundance, which later helped them survive when food became unavailable. But in modern times, food is always available and we do not need to exercise to gather food. So these once beneficial thrifty genes can now lead to obesity and diabetes. So how do we avoid becoming obese and diabetic if it is embedded in our DNA? Well, controlled eating and plenty of exercise helps. Recent research also suggests that intermittent fasting may be a healthier lifestyle choice, 
which is similar to our ancestors' plentiful eating followed by periods of starvation. But that is a topic for another video. By the way, all the information used in my video are taken from peer-reviewed scientific journals. If you're interested, you can find the links in the description box below. If you like the video, you know what to do. Until next time, I'm Reza and this was Scientastica. Together, we're all family.